a Cards with Michael production. What's up, guys? Cards with Michael here, and yeah. Flesh and Blood opening, Arcane Rising, the second set. This is, of course, the unlimited product. All right, all right. And uh, what else we got here? It's made in Belgium. Got some other characters. This one's sponsored, oops, by Amy. Thank you so much, Amy. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Uh, Arcane Rising, another standalone set. So this set can be drafted, can be played sealed with. Released last year. Uh, honestly, the, the release time was a little poor. I think it was released around March, April. Um, the unlimited product came a few months later. Uh, four new heroes and also arcane damage. Whoa. Um, it is a set that uh, is a little bit more complicated. The heroes are a little bit less straightforward. I would recommend Arcane Rising for, for people who are just trying to begin and get into the game. Uh, but Amy likes it. We're going to open some and let's get to it. All right, so if you haven't seen uh, an Arcane Rising box opening before, check out the first time I've ever opened one, or check out one of my Flesh and Blood Welcome to Raid openings, where I kind of just talk about the contents of these. So Unlimited uh, Arcane Rising is actually a little bit different from the first edition type of boxes. Uh, we'll start with the first four cards. These are same for both box types, Welcome to Raid and Arcane Rising. They're four generic commons. You see that C, you see the word generic, right? four of them. Then we always have this for, this common equipment, all right, common equipment. Could be generic and could be uh, class specific. That's Runeblade, Viserai's in the set. Then we have our two rares. Irina's Prayer is our first rare, and Aether Spindle Blue Pitch is our second rare. And then we always got a foil here, all right, Fail, foil, fate foreseen. And then we have our class specific cards, okay? The only difference is first edition would have the equipment right here after the foil. So very small difference, but you know, for those who ever had the chance of opening a first edition. Hey, we have a double Kano token. Kano, of course, is the wizard in this in this game, and he starts with less health. Everyone, all the other young heroes start, well, most of the young heroes start with 20. He starts with at least 15. And his adult version only starts with 30, and that tells you how powerful his ability is, his instant ability. All right, got some comments, put them to the side. That's pack number one. Let's see how we do the rest of the box. Arcane Rising, of course. Oh, by the way, just because of this, all the tokens are double-sided except for the Cracked Bobble. So we knew that, that was a Cracked Bobble. All right, what are our first four commons? Okay, there's our first four commons. Uh, yellow pitches aren't too exciting. Talismanic Lens. All right, here's our first rare, Pedal to the Metal. Another Irina's Prayer Yellow. And a Foil Come to Fight. See that little rainbowness? Uh, blue Pitch. All right, then we got our commons, and same thing. Uh, whoa, this is actually something I've never seen before. There's three ranger commons and then one of each of the other class or sorry And then only one wizard and one uh, Mech for what well, for welcome the raid you never had situations like this and then you get three and they're all red pitch Red pitch of course is the most powerful for attacks. Well, I would probably be leaning playing uh, w Ranger just from seeing this happening. I never paid attention to that enough. Yeah, like the last pack, actually, um, we had two of every class except for Runeblade. This is the Runeblade one. All right, anyways, you guys came here for a box opening. We'll do that. I'm trying to sort of appeal to guys who are new, but, you know, this is this is just the kind of thing where hopefully by now you've watched the video on how to play, and then you're watching this. Got a foil. Back alley break line is our foil. All right, so what about this pack? Yeah, same thing. Just one Ranger card, but the other classes have two cards each. Another Cracked Bobble. Arcane Rising, the unlimited version, is still readily available, unlike Welcome to Wraith, which is basically gone. Like, if you want to buy Welcome to Wraith, you're going to have to pay a slight premium on the unlimited product. It's a little bit uh, less common because people are speculating on it, as it is kind of a late, uh, early print now of Welcome to Wraith. It has the Jordan Brutalities. Future printings won't. Hey, we have our first super rare. Ninth Blade of the Blood Oath. Costs nine resources. Deals nine, but it costs less to play for each rune chain and control. If you can play this for like two or three costs, it's great. Uh, anything more and starts getting inefficient. So let's you know kind of what card, type of card this is. We have a Foil Foresight. Actually, not a bad card at all. All right. And on to the next. Here we go. We got our commons, bullseye bracers, plunder run, endless arrows, our second super rare, right? Neat, and a foil take aim. So, same thing with uh, 
Flesh and Blood, we're looking for the Majestics. Um, you're not guaranteed a Legendary, but any of the Legendaries would pay for the box, which is really neat. Mage Master Boots. Reduce the Rune Chant is our first rare. Spellblade Assault is our second. And a Foil Back Alley Break Line Yellow Pitch. And here's Dash, the Mechanologist. And that's the Crucible of Aetherweave, the Wizard Weapon that doesn't actually even attack for damage. It just amplifies your actual spells. And it is better than the other one, the other weapon that comes in Crucible of War by a lot. Take cover, Enchanting Melody, and a foil, lead the charge, yellow. Pitch, yeah, on to the next, on to the next. Here we go. We got our four commons, Talismanic Lens, Pour the Mold, Irena's Prayer, and a foil, Headshot. Jeez. The gore, the gore on this. It is very, very intense. This is a 16 plus game, so keep that in mind, my fans, my supporters. Uh, it's not that the channel isn't family friendly, it's just some of these cards. Uh, you know, you might want to, you know, make sure. You oh! This is a foil Arc Knight Ascendancy! Ah! <laughs> Holy moly! Nice! Oh, what a sweet pull for Amy. Ah, I love it. So this is, oh my gosh, I should talk about this. This is Majestic. You can tell because of that M. This is a Viserai specialization. You can only play it if you're a Viserai. And it's just a very powerful card. Just a very powerful card, right? And of course it is foil. You can't really tell that it's foil, but it is foil, trust me, and a super good hit. And I'm really glad to see that we got a foil Majestic in this pack because, or this box, because it means that we'll probably, we'll get two more Majestic most of the time. Uh, most of the time, the Foil Majestics aren't part of the Majestic count. All right, here we go. We got a Viserai, a little token here. Okay. On to the next. Got our four commons, our common equipment, our two rares, and a Foil Red Hamstring Shot. All right. Okay. On to the next. On to the next. Here we go, two, three, four, Null Rune Hood, our first two rares, and a foil rare, Irina's Prayer, Yellow Pitch. Oh man, Irina's Prayer, not, not really a card that I would play, but um, you know, it could be good, I guess. I've seen some in the sideboards of Classic Constructed. Well, not sideboard, ooh, a Life for Life Fred. This is a highly collectible card, I mean, playable card. I would make sure to have a play set or three just to kind of slot them in and out because they are generic attack. Here we go on to the next pack. We got our four commons, a bullseye bracers. That's the ranger common equipment. And oh, another majestic. Also for the Arc Knight, the Rune Blade, more dread tide, as well as a blood spill invocation. Alright, so we did get two majestics already. And who there's Azalea. Ace in the hole. Alright. You'll love to see it. You'll love to see it. Um, okay, at this point, I'm expecting one more Majestic in this box. You know, it's not like we can't get a Legendary at this point. Take aim, stir the Aether Winds, and a foil zipper hit. All right. Uh, we'd love to see another. <laughs> we'd love to see a Legendary. Are we open? Uh, so, the way that the boxes or the Legendaries are spread out from these boxes is extremely random. I've opened an entire case and not gotten a single, ooh, a little blue light for life, and not gotten a single, um, and not gotten a single legendary. And then I've opened two boxes that were right on top of each other and they both have the same legendary. So, you know, obviously what I'm saying is anecdotal. Oh, another red light for life, very nice. Take aim and a sickum shot, okay. But I enjoy that because I think that if it was if you were guaranteed a legendary per box, it would just make it very awkward, um, you know, to buy single boxes because then if someone opened a legendary, then you know they sell you the box. You have no idea. Ooh, another majestic, sonic boom as well as a foil rifting. Yes, so the sonic boom. I mean, this card is the start of a lot of intense uh, wizard, just like one turn kills. If you've never been killed by wizard. Uh, on your own turn while attacking them, or done that to someone while they were attacking to you as wizard, uh, you haven't lived. 
Wizard is super powerful in Blitz. Um, very worth learning because you at least need to play Wizard to know how to play against Wizard. All right, so those are our three Majestics. Glad to see three Majestics. Now we're looking for that legendary, maybe a foil super rare, if possible. Okay. Oh, okay. That's, sorry, guys. Two rares. We do have a rainbow foil equipment, the Robe of Rapture. All right. I've never really seen this one be that popular. Although, you know, I don't know why. I mean, I think this compared to Tunic isn't that bad. I need some wizard players to tell me why um, Robe of Rapture isn't that good. All right, where am I? Okay, I have this pile here that I forgot to separate out. Okay, on to the next pack. So we've seen a Rainbow Foil Equipment now in Arcane Rising, first edition. That would have been the Cold Foil, Spellblade Assaults, any zero to sixty. Okay. All right, last three packs. Amy, big thank you for sponsoring this. I know that we've gotten some nuts pulls for you. Maybe not today. Oh, got another super rare. Here's Lesson in Lava. So Kano is actually based in Volcor, and that is what this border is. And when we go back to Volcor in another set, not Monarch, we already know it's not Monarch, we'll see that border again, and just super neat. Look at that border. It's one of my favorite parts of uh, Flesh and Blood. It's just how each of these cards has these borders that represent the place that they're from as well as a foil over loop. Now, the only confusing one is Mech, who's from Metrics, which is what this is representing, um, because, uh, like, Mechanologist is kind of not, like, like you could have, like, a Mechanologist warrior, is what I think uh, I'm trying to say. Uh, there's some verbiage here that I don't know how to express. All right, Life Rare, Life Rare, Pour the Mold Rare, in a foil sun kiss blue. All right, last pack. Here we go. What do we got here? Achilles Accelerator, take cover, Rusted Relic, another super rare, and a foil rifting. So most of your boxes are gonna look like this. Um, this is a uh, average run of the mill box. Um, we got our four super rares, which is roughly how many we're expecting. All right, four super rares. You're, they're expecting one in every six packs, so that kind of makes sense. And then um, our two Majestics and a Foil Majestic. So slightly a little bit more Majestics than usual. This Arctic Ascendancy and Mordor Tide are super playable. I expect Mordor Tide just to be a playable Rune Blade card, no matter what type of Rune Blade, Shadow Rune Blade uh, included. Um, and that is box opening. Amy, thank you again for sponsoring this. Sorry I couldn't get you the eye this time, but definitely on the next. Guys, see you.